they're very, very intimate and there is a ghostly quality to them. They're like these souls that linger on in these little precious boxes. Today I am extremely excited to be showing you some beautiful pocket treasures we have within our collection. The first process I'm going to speak about today is the daguerreotype process. Daguerreotypes were invented in 1839 by Louis Daguerre. These are the first commercially viable types of photographs, so uh, they captured the public's imagination straight away. A daguerreotype is made by exposing an image on a silver-plated sheet of copper. It could take up to 30 minutes to produce a daguerreotype, so sitters would have to sit still as they possibly could in order for a photographer to render their image. These were not available in multiples. They were direct positives and they were one-off unique items, so they were cherished. Really only the wealthy families could afford to have them, and it would have been a real sign of status if a family could afford to have more than one. And we can see this lovely cluster of daguerreotypes here, which come from the one family. We can see a grandfather, a father and a grandson. So they're all from the one Tasmanian family. The youngest member of the group is hand colored. You can see there's lovely shade of red in the cheeks, which gives the youthful look to the boy and also in his lips. They're very, very intimate and there is a ghostly quality to them. They're like these souls that linger on in these little precious boxes and you have to search to find them. The second process that we're going to look at today is the ambrotype. The ambrotype is quite different to the daguerreotype because an ambrotype is basically on a glass support rather than a metal support. Ambrotypes pretty much took over from the daguerreotype simply because they were much easier to produce and could be produced in a matter of minutes. The image produced is in fact a negative, but the process involves placing your glass sheet onto a dark surface in order to create what looks like a positive. So there's a little bit of foolery in this particular process. And what's really, really beautiful about this particular image is we see um, an older man surrounded by three younger girls, possibly his grandchildren. But if you look at the details of this amber type, it has been hand colored and we can see some beautiful red tinting in the flowers that the girls are holding left and right of the image and this beautiful vibrant green top on the older girl. Well, what's particularly important to note, I guess, with amber types is that they're on glass and the fact that they've survived over this amount of time is really quite special. So someone has taken the time to look after this particular item over a period of possibly 160 years. The tin type was a process that was painted in 1856, so very, very soon after the advent of the amber type. And in fact, the tin type completely took over from the amber types. Now the tin type is really the beginning of mass photography. So we have the daguerreotype being very, very rare, the amber type a little bit more readily available, but the tin type being such a, a cheap process, every class of society could afford to buy a tin type. And as a result, we see the advent of a number of street photographers all around the country. Um, you could literally approach a street photographer and have an image taken of yourself in a matter of moments. Now, very often these tin types were presented in simple paper folders. So nowhere near as decorative as the cases we see for the amber types and daguerreotypes. As families began to gather more of these, albums were produced very much like photo albums uh, we would have had today or in the recent past. And we can see a lovely example of a tintype album here. And you can see what's so beautiful is the honest representation of people in the middle of the 1800s. So when looking back on these three early photographic processes, it's interesting to see how they paved the way for modern photography. Today, we hold our cameras in our pockets and we can take an image so instantaneously. It really reminds me of why I love my job of being a conservator. I get to work with these intimate pocket treasures. I get to handle them and I get to preserve the spirits of the people captured in these photo albums so that their legacies can remain.
Thank you.